Hey guys, welcome back to your channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Angela, and today we're gonna be talking about the 12 books I'm most excited to read in 2023. Now, this is just a personal list of books I'm interested in reading this year. It's basically one giant year-long TBR. I'm planning on picking up one of these books each month. I know I'm notoriously bad at sticking to my seasonal and monthly to-be-read piles, but I've tried this method for a couple years now, and it's worked really well for me. I found so many books that I've just fallen in love with and have become five star favorites. Hopefully you will find some new to you titles within this list as well and if you've read any of these books let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. In January I plan on reading The White Mosque by Sophia Samatar. This is a very unique travel memoir. From what I heard in the late 19th century a group of Mennonites trekked from Russia to Central Asia. They establish at some point in a predominantly Muslim area what becomes known as the White Mosque. Sophia Samatar, the author of this book, shares both Mennonite and Muslim heritage, and she joins a tour in the present day that goes to the White Mosque in Uzbekistan. I remember being immediately intrigued by the premise, and once I got to the bottom of the blurb, I knew I had to read this book. A secular pilgrimage to a lost village and a near forgotten history, the White Mosque traces the poorest and ever expanding borders of identity, asking how do we enter the stories of others and how, out of the tissue of life, with its weird incidents, buried archives, and startling connections, does a person construct a self. Next, I'll be prioritizing The Last Nomad. This is a memoir of Shugri Sal, who grew up in a nomadic family in Somalia. After the Somali civil war broke out, she faced a harrowing journey where she eventually escaped to Canada. There were lots of challenges that Sal faced. The patriarchy within her tribe fleeing to the Kenyan border, being in new unfamiliar surroundings. The first line is what hooked me. It is... I'm the last nomad, that's it. It was such a short, memorable sentence. I was surprised by how sure and final the tone was, but it's also the kind of confident voice that I tend to really like in memoirs. So I'm really looking forward to reading this as well. Next up, I have a book that I know I'm not gonna read in order, and that's perfectly fine. It's Food in the City by Ina Yelov. This is a collection of essays and interviews that explores New York City's food scene. New York City has such a rich food culture, and this book promises to skim its surface. The voice is shared range from line cooks to street vendors. According to the tagline, each person in the restaurant industry that is interviewed talks about what they do and why they do it. And I've flipped through a few essays. They're very short. They're like five pages at most. And they each begin with a short italicized blurb describing the eatery. And then it kind of shifts perspectives to the baker, the banquet manager or chef in waiting, whoever is sharing their New York City story through food. It's the kind of book that I'm really looking forward to reading with my morning cup of coffee and just escaping on a little NYC food tour. <laughs> Kaike was one of my most anticipated releases last year. I pre-ordered this book after I saw it mentioned on this Story Ain't Over's channel. I was immediately intrigued by the the idea of a feminist retelling, not so much of a retelling, but a refocusing from a different perspective of the Ramayana. This novel is viewed from the lens of one of the minor characters, Kagye, and it's similar to Circe, except rooted in Hindu mythology instead of Greek mythology. I know I'm gonna love it. I know it's going to be one of my favorite books of all time, and that's also why I'm stalling on reading it. I don't want it to be over, and I know that's kind of a ridiculous reason not not to read a book. So this year I'm definitely planning on starting and finishing this novel and falling head over heels in love with it and just it being one of my new favorite books of all time. I think This Is Paradise promises a lot. The descriptions alone promise that it will be bold and groundbreaking, that it's nuanced and authentic and unafraid to be dark. Christiana Kahakuila's short story collection teeters between native Hawaiian life and mainstream Hawaiian tourism. Oprah Magazine describes it as gritty, haunting, and suspenseful. This is Paradise navigates an ocean of tension between tourists and islanders in a paradisical, paradoxical Hawaii. And to me, that just sounds so interesting and so intriguing, and I can't wait to read this. I loved Less by Andrew Sean Greer. Less is Lost is the sequel. In Less, Arthur Less, a failed novelist, jaunts around the world to avoid a wedding. He is in the true, literal meaning of the phrase, escape from his problems. This was a very lighthearted book, soft and awkward and lovely and comical. To me, it felt very, very deep prey love and I adored it. So I saw Less is Lost in hardcover at the bookshop in Nashville and I knew I couldn't wait for it to come out in paperback to read it. The time is now. In Less is Lost, Arthur Less sets off on a road trip around the United States in a rusty camper van with his pug named Dolly. It's a story I just can't wait 
wanted to return to. It's gonna be so sweet and so funny and just a really good time. I've heard this book is perfect, that's all. That if perfection existed for a book in terms of comedy, it would be The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Seconds before Earth is demolished to make way for a galactic freeway, Arthur Dent is plucked off the planet by his friend Ford Prefect, a researcher for the revised edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, who, for the last 15 years, has been posing as an out-of-work actor. Together, this dynamic pair begin a journey through space, aided by a galaxy full of fellow travelers. I apologize in advance for all the references I'll be making after reading this. So, I'm not really sure what genre Alex Garland's The Beach falls into, but I've heard that it's compelling like a thriller, has the descriptions of a travel memoir, at least initially, and the dark turns and hold your breath moments of a suspense novel. This is the story of a backpacker who goes to Thailand, the backpacker chases after an unspoiled forbidden fruit of paradise, and then that paradise cove turns out to be, well, not so paradise-like. I've heard the movie is really good as well, I haven't seen either but I look forward to reading the book and watching the movie. Babel has been on so many people's favorite books of 2022 list. It seems wrong for a book that is as loved, as gushed about as this title to be collecting dust on my bookshelf. I've heard a lot of positive discourse about how effectively Babel tackles colonialism and privilege. The storyline that allows those themes to blossom and unfold also seem intriguing. For Robin, Oxford is a utopia dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. But knowledge obeys power, and as a Chinese boy raised in Britain, he realizes serving Babel, which I've heard is this world center for translation. Serving Babel means betraying his motherland. As his studies progress, Robin finds himself caught between Babel and the shadowy Hermes Society, an organization dedicated to stopping imperial expansion. When Britain pursues an unjust war with China over silver and opium, Robin must decide, can powerful institutions be changed from within, or does revolution always require violence? This story just seems really ambitious, and based on everything I've heard so far, it seems to have achieved its objective and stirred so much more dialogue as well, which is why I feel so compelled to pick it up, and I can't wait to get to this book. In October, I'll be rereading Phantom of the Opera. I absolutely love this book. It's one of my favorite classics of all time, and I think I'd love to read the lost chapter as well this time. Everything about the story, the humor, the dialogue, the atmosphere, the pacing just clicked for me. It's written like a classic detective story. The story itself is simple and easy to follow along, but also quite cleverly constructed. Christine is an aspiring singer and she is being trained by the opera ghost, who is pretty much obsessed with her. I think one thing that I loved about this story is that unlike in the musical, the relationship between Christine and Eric isn't romanticized at really any point. Eric's character is more tragic, dark, more horrifying. Gaston LaRue's Phantom of the Opera feels more gothic in tone and themes, but it's still fun and fast-paced, and there's a lot of cliffhanger-esque moments, partially because the book was published as a serialization that just keeps you on your toes and just leaves you hungry for more. Hopefully, by the time I pick up The Condor's Feather, I will be done with grad school. We will see, but I do plan on celebrating with a book that's going to inspire me to get out there and see the world. I'm excited. I'm ready for that. The Condor's Feather is a travel memoir. After a vicious attack left Michael Webster in treatment for years, it was only his love of nature, in particular birds, that truly healed. Repaying this debt to nature, he and his wife embarked on their trip of a lifetime, traveling through South America, immersed in the wild, following and filming birds. For over four years, Michael and Paula traveled the length of the Andes, the greatest mountain chain on earth, from penguins in Patagonia, up beyond the hummingbirds of the equator to the flamingos of the Caribbean. They endured dust storms, thundering gales, icy mountaintops, and skin-searing heat, and tested the limits of their physical and mental strength as they lived wild month after month camping under galaxies of diamond stars. The Condor's Feather is a testament to the possibility of new adventures, new friendships, and new hope. I love a good travel book and this seems like just that. Lastly, in December, I wanna reread A Castle in the Clouds. I enjoyed this book so much last year. So December feels like a good one for rereads, especially with books that feel cozy and comfortable like this one. Sophie Spark is an intern at this grand hotel in the Swiss mountains. The hotel itself is one of the main characters of the book. It's so predominant. When I first read this book, I wanted to stay at that hotel. I looked it up, I wanted to book a night. Unfortunately, it's not real. I'm gutted. Sophie 
is sweet and hardworking and she's trying her best as a hotel intern. The first part of the story feels a bit slice of life. I remember slowly getting acquainted with the hotel, the hotel staff, falling for each of the characters, getting accustomed to their routine and patterns and habits. And then all of a sudden this book takes a wild telenovela-esque twist in the last one fourth and it's just brimming with suspense. I would have loved this story regardless even if it did continue its original slow pace just because the setting is so much fun and the setting is absolutely why I want to return to it. Those are 12 of the books I want to prioritize in 2023. If you're here for my blog, you probably recognize that all of these books are Eden Travel Book Club selections. If you're not and you're interested in reading any of these books along with me, I'll leave a link in the description box describing more about the book club and how that works. Feel free to ignore it. I'm just really happy that I got a chance to share some books I'm passionate about and really interested in reading with you. Let me know what you're planning on reading in 2023. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.